way. Hi, everybody! <laughs> I am Amy Pierce Stone of Her Art from the Attic. This is my mama, Hello. Carrie Pierce. Hello. One, one of my greatest artistic influences. So today, we are going to paint this magnolia blossom. Magnolia blossoms at dawn. Are you excited? I am so excited. <laughs> Your shirt even kind of matches. Magnolias, that's nice. <laughs> so, I love magnolias. In fact, Nate just got me a magnolia tree for Mother's Day. Because he's the greatest. Pretty much. Nate's my hotty hotty hubbub who's running things behind the scenes. Um, so I was driving around just looking for magnolia blossoms and I found this giant magnolia tree in front of this house. And apparently I, I knocked on the door to see if I could take some pictures of it. And there was nobody answered. So I just started taking pictures anyway. But then this um, elderly lady across the street came over and we just started talking. We talked for probably 45 minutes about the, the woman who lived in the house with the magnolia tree and how she's in a nursing home right now and the magnolias just bring her so much joy. So I'm hoping to paint this and then get her um, a framed copy of it. I thought that would be nice. Anyway, so let's get started. Um, Let's talk about supplies quickly. So, we've got, for starters, I've got um, this photo reference, or this Magnolia Lesson reference kit, which includes, read this way, oh, here we are. So, it's got the original photo of the Magnolia, the grayscale photo, so you can, you know, better see intensity and contrast. There's a simple sketch map for those who want a sketch reference. Where are we? <laughs> and that one's actually yours. There's a more complex sketch map. And there's this color map that tells you exactly what colors are where. I mean, the exact, so that you can test your colors. And then this is a color recipe, color mixing recipe guide. So you, I'll put a link. There is a link right now actually in the description of where you can find all this stuff f to make this easier for you. The, you know, any of these can be scaled down and traced or transferred in any way, projected onto a canvas or paper. Also, the sketch maps are really cool. I think if you've got little kids like I do, and maybe you want to do some art with them, you can print one off and they can color it while you paint. What do you think about them apples? I think that's a great idea. <laughs> so you're going to paint and I'm going to color. You ready? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so let's grab, let's start our sketch. There's a pencil there for you. We're just going to sketch it out onto our canvas here. I'm going to, I'm going to reference both my black and white photo, my grayscale photo, and my sketch, a simple sketch map. So, and I'm going to stand up so I can be at a better angle. Let's start with the blossom. I'm gonna, going to... So do you want me to follow what you're doing? Yeah, you do what I'm doing. And we are going to start with the petals of the blossom and kind of take it from there. And this is, you know, if you find basically the middle of your canvas at the bottom and then come up, up about a third of the way, that's where the, the bottom of the center of your blossom is. So we're just going to quickly sketch out, um, let's sketch out this bottom petal here. So Which one? this, this okay. one right here, it's kind of like... Do you, oh. you mind if I move the blossom around where I put it? You in put there, it wherever or? you want, Mom. Okay. But I'm going to follow this sketch reference for those watching at home. Okay. So this one, this bottom petal is kind of this wonky bean shape. It comes up and over, back down, around here. Now I'm Which one are you doing? This oh, one. one. Okay. Now I'm doing this one that's this crescent shape that comes starts kind of off on the middle and then 
another crescent that comes down and curves around back in. And then it's got this lip on it, kind of right there. Okay, now I'm going to do this main blossom, this other main blossom over here, which is kind of another pointed bean shape. Let's start at the middle of this blossom, bring it up, over, oh, no around a rounded point. Sorry. You want to sketch lightly too, so it. Okay. And we're going to bring it back down, kind of, till it meets the bottom. And then there's this line right here, which represents actually a highlight in the flower where the sun is shining through. And then we're going to draw this line right here. Then there's this big rainbow shape. It starts kind of in the middle of the top of that first petal we did. Rainbow comes back down over here to this petal. So we just did that. Then maybe this could be bigger over here. And don't worry if your proportions are off a little bit because you can paint over it. Um, then there's this triangular shape here. Now I'll sketch out this main branch right there. So actually let's find the branch. That, oh, I forgot this little petal over here. Let's sketch that out. This is, uh, I need an eraser. <laughs> you don't need an eraser. This is just a sketch. This is not. Okay. Don't don't think of it like I got to make this fabulous drawing. This is just your reference for when you're painting the shapes down. And it honestly, I mean, yes, the the petals of magnolias are, I mean, they're pretty geometric, but once they start waving and curving, then proportions change and you don't need to worry about exactness. So now I'm going to do this main branch here, which is kind of like this line that comes up and then over, and then there's a line up. There's a little twig that comes off. I'm not going to worry about super exactness here either, but I'm going to try for time's sake. There's some little buds coming off there. Again, the sketch, sketch reference is really helpful if you're doing this at home. I know some people got the sketch reference or downloaded it already, but okay, and then that just comes over there. So we've got this main branch. Let's put a few more of these branches over here. Well, first I'll start with this little bud that kind of, you can see some of my magnet, I'm not getting the entire picture of my canvas and that's okay. So when the little twigs come off that connect to the buds or the blossoms, um, they're pretty wiggly and, and bumpy. So keep that in mind while you're sketching them out. Okay, there's my main branch coming there. Not necessarily going to worry about all those lines, but just basic shapes for now. Bumpy. All right, I'm going to finish off this branch. Kind of comes behind the flower. It's bumpy again. Breaks off into two. So there's these little holes there. Then it's a good idea to draw the one that's in the foreground and then work your way backwards. So this one's in front. There's like two little buds sticks, so I'll draw those. This one comes down, it's even smaller. Wiggly and bumpy. And then there's that branch right there that comes off. Alright, now I'll quickly sketch those out. So we've got this main branch there's a dip there. Then there's this like just bulbous, jaggedy, big shape right here there where lots of twigs and blossoms have come off. So we'll just kind of draw that a squiggly bob, <laughs> more or less following the shape that we see. Then starting from this, there's a 
wiggly branch. I like when Look the... you're already, already dead and I'm still working That's on the blossom. That's because you're a perfectionist. I know. Sorry. No, it's good because <laughs> people need, like, a better reference for painting, so they'll just look at yours. <laughs> um, okay, so I've got my blob. There's a few little branches there. And then this branch, wiggly, bumpy, little twig with a bud there. It's pretty narrow, and then there's kind of this bulbous thing that comes out. There's a bunch of little bulbs off or bulgy things off of that branch. Comes back down. I'm going to kind of make this branch come up so it's in my painting more because it, it gets cut off here, but I want that in all the way. So I'll just pretend it comes up like this. And then there's this little bulby thing. Comes back in. It's over here bumps and dips. The best thing to remember when drawing twigs like this is that um, when they connect to the main branch they kind of go triangularly this triangular shape into it that curves up into the branch the main branch and then it tapers off as it gets smaller and smaller but that it's a gradual taper so, wiggly and bumpy, and I am about done with mine there. So you go ahead and finish there. I'm going to start um, getting colors ready. So you can sketch out yours. And remember, you don't want your pencil... Do you have... You're using... What is this? A, quite a dark pencil. Oh, no. You're just sketching dark. Sorry. So try, no, you just got to remember that if you sketch really dark, then the pencil might go into your paint. Okay. Which, since we're using such light, so many light colors, you just want to be careful because you don't want that gray from your pencil, the graphite, to muddy up your colors. Okay. But you can always, you know, paint multiple layers to get rid can of that. Can you use an eraser on this or is that a no-no? Um, you, no, you can, but... It, it won't erase as nicely as like on paper. Uh -huh. So you're going to get more smudges. Oh, I forgot the branch that connects to the flower here. So it's just floating. So I'll go ahead and connect a branch to the blossom. It's going to curve down over there. And that's triangular too, up into the blossom. And then it connects to the branch. There's this pretty green bulb that comes off right there. And, yeah, there's this branch here. That's probably why I forgot it. It actually connects to the flower. So it's a pretty, the one behind it. Just add that in. Okay. All right. So let's start looking at colors. That is beautiful. Can you see why she's my inspiration here? I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm just eyeballing it. Now, let's see. Okay, so. We are going to, I'm going to find my color map. And we're going to start with the blossom. So the blossom is made up of these just beautiful, warm reds and pinks and purples. And, and it's interesting because, you know, the blossom looks like it gets quite bright, but the brightest part of the blossom, the main blossom, is this kind of peachy, muted color right there. There is this really bright blossom in the back, but that's about as dark as it, or as light as it gets, which is surprising when you eyeball it, because you think, oh, I've got to paint white right here. But um, we'll get more into that as we go here. So let's grab our lightest, we're going to start with our lightest color, and I've got my 
little reference or recipe guide. It says I need five parts white. So I'm just going to do a big glob of white with a tiny dot of this. Sorry, I need to move this for a second. That's okay. Um, I'm you can kind of use Venetian red. I'm I'm actually using a cadmium red deep hue, but it's basically the same color as Venetian red. It's just this dark maroony color. So I'm going to spilling out a brand new bottle. I'm going to grab a dot on my popsicle stick and just put it right in the white there and mix that up. And that looks a little too light looking pair. Always remember that when you're using acrylics, they dry a little bit darker. So take that into account when you're mixing your colors. So you're doing light colors first? Yep, I'm starting lightest to darkest because it's easier putting a little more red. So it's still not quite dark enough. Um, it's, it's easier to get the colors you want when you start from light to dark because if you're trying to blend um, a light color, color from a dark color you've already laid down or trying to get a white color over the dark color then it just takes a lot more paint and a lot more time. So, got this. It's pretty close. I think when it dries, it'll be about that. So this is the one you're doing right here? Yep, I'm doing that peachy tone. So you can just use my paint oh, that I'm okay. mixing. I'm okay, making good. enough good. for both of us. Thank you. So, <clears throat> got some paint on my hands. So let's grab our... Um, Let's grab our medium size angle brush. This is actually a size four. So it's this one right here. Which one? This one? This one. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do first is we're going to, here, you want to just with a popsicle stick or with, yeah, because you don't want it all. What do you Just want? grab some on your palette. Oh, to put, to put some of yours yeah. in mine. That's plenty. Okay. okay. So we're going to start. Oops, let me close this paint before it gets I, everywhere. I've never done this before. Never done what? I've never painted with acrylics, really. Well, here we go. Like, Are you a, excited? A, yes, a painting type thing mm -hmm. before. Well, there's. I have no doubt that you will pick this up fast because you have an artistic eye. Okay, so we're going to start, Mom, by painting in the lightest colors Okay. Except for this really bright white one back here. Let's okay. not paint that yet. But try to find the lightest tones here that you see, and we're going to paint those in. So just load some on the end of your brush. I like the angled brush because when you're working with curves and angles, which the Magnolia has all at the same time, then you can get your brush to easily curve with you. So I'm going to start at the tip here. There's this shadow here that I want in there that will help um, really emphasize the sun coming up. So it comes down and then it's going to come over to a little above where that this petal starts. Over here. And which one are you? Oh, you're, okay. Yes. And then it comes down. Yeah, I can see I made bit. my lines too. No, it's okay. And then it meets the edge there, and then, and then we're just going to lift off when it comes and make the paint thinner where we want it to blend here, and thicker at the top. So thick up here, and then when we get to that line, well, these that we're going to draw there, 
for paint and it will become thinner and thinner. So I'm filling that in a little bit. I'm going to put a teeny bit over here, this triangular light shape there. Again, don't worry too much if it goes into a place you don't want it to go. So this bright spot right here, if you see this triangular petal above it, it actually comes a little to the inside of it and comes down. And that will again help you emphasize the shadow when we paint that in. And that there's this leaf or this petal that's, you know, being emphasized behind it. So we've got this bright color here. I didn't even I'm going to paint draw that in there. Down here. It on the edge a little bit over here and then there's this kind of rectangular shape on the side of this petal that comes in again the shapes inside the shapes of color inside the magnolias pay close attention to them when you're painting because um, they're really going to help you emphasize the bright sun at dawn shining through the flower or, yeah and I forgot that petal you forgot that one I forgot this one <laughs> okay and I'll come on this side triangular point up here comes back down just over that part now I'm gonna paint the inside of that lip and the shadow from the branch is shining through so the brightest part actually starts a little way down a little ways down in that lip of the flower and comes down and then there's some at the top a little bit which will get covered up a little more and then I'm going to paint a little in this, there's this bright, bright color here on this flower. It's also a little point that comes and then it swoops up. And then this, this petal over here is quite bright. I'll just fill that in for now. So I'm going to put a little bit of bright paint here and actually I am going to fill in this petal right here. Which one? This back one yeah. and then I'll just, I'm just going to do a thin layer here and then I'll do a little brighter over it afterward. So. And then maybe if you want to put another layer over some of the stuff you already painted down. Go ahead and do that. Now here, I'm going to bring this petal out over here. Okay. Now, oh, will you hand me that water over by you, please? This? Yes. Or the jar, which, whichever. You can use the jar. I'm going to wash my brush out. And then up next, let's go to the next hue, which is this rosy color. And um, we're going to take some of that color that we just used and we're going to add some more red into that of the Venetian red or the dark crimson or the cadmium red, I should say. How's it going, Nate? 
Sounds like you're typing with people. Sure am. <laughs> Lots of friends on here today. Hi, everybody. Who's out there? Well, Mark and Emmy and Susan and Boards. Hello, everybody. Is anyone doing this with us today? I know quite a few people downloaded the reference kit. So I'm curious to know if anyone's actually painting right along with us or if you're just planning on doing it later. Well, yeah, we were just talking about that. Some people have... I do a little darker. Some people didn't know that it was happening until just this morning, and so <laughs> and we were just saying it would be if we could find a way to get people a little more advance notice, then they would have come prepared with canvas and everything. Oh. But we did try to... We did try to get it out there a little better this time. But yeah. Definitely need to look for some ways to get it out there a little what, better. What do people find is the best way to find out about stuff? So this has been up for about a week. I've been putting stuff on Facebook. I know stuff gets buried, though, in news feeds. Okay, I'm liking where this hue is. So I've just added quite a bit more of the deeper red hue. Are you, you can keep going. Do you want some of this? Yes. Okay. Start with that much. And I'm going to steal some of this back so I can make some other colors later. Okay. So now, um, I'm actually, can I use this water for rinsing? Yes, that is your water. Okay. So let's, let's go in and find the next hues the next darker hues and we're going to add them in. Basically, you know, in this main petal here, there, it's kind of at the bottom and goes up into it. And this is where you can, you can put your, if you watch here, mom, if you put your angled brush flat and then twist it up, you'll get it thick on the bottom and then it goes into this line up. And there's a lot of little tiny, almost vein looking lines that go up into the magnolia. So I'm going to add that those hues right now. I put some on the side over here. Yeah. Coming up. Start on this side. There's quite a bit on this petal on the outside. Coming down. And I'm going to kind of sh go shaggy into the petal below, just lifting my brush off as I go down. And then there's a spot right here that's got above where that shadow is. I'm painting that shadow. There's definitely some darker tones in this leaf that comes down. Shagging it in, whisking it. <laughs> Nate just looked at me with this look of confusion. Like, what kind of terminology is that? Okay. Hey, you, what you want to say <laughs> is up to you. Thank you. Go ahead and use whatever words you like. <laughs> Okay, I'm emphasizing that shadow there. There's a lot of deeper tones in this petal right here. So I'm going to emphasize those. I'm going to bring it over. Down. And there's this really thin, bright line around the petals and branches that is one of the best ways to show that the sun is shining through, but we're going, going to add that at the very end. So don't worry about those lines around the edges too much. Capiche? You got it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So make sure that this, this shadow here is quite bold and comes out a little bit. So you're doing that shadow in a <clears throat> in a pink instead of a 
instead of a more not pink. Yep, I'm going to add darker colors more and more as we go. So um, this is where we start to layer and get the little, the textured look of the flowers. So this shadow here is almost like just shifted over a little bit as if it were going to carry on to this triangular shape here, but shifted a tiny bit. That will emphasize our shadow. Just pull that down. That's going to get darker and darker, like I said, but... Yes, because if you look at the shadow and all the colors in the blossoms, there's lots of little tiny different colors and textures within them. So we're going to try to show that when we paint when we choose colors. I'm going to add that shadow actually all the way in here. It's kind of this triangular shadow at the top that dips in a little bit right there. shadow of the branch behind it and then got that leap the petal shaped shadow right there It's kind of fun to paint a flower with shadows because, you know, when you think of painting magnolias, at least me, I think of just like painting each leaf the same faded colors that flow. They're not so choppy like they are in here, but it, the choppiness adds to the beauty here. So as harsh as that shadow looks it's actually a little bit soft on the edges so what I'll do is I'll take just a little tiny paint from my angled brush and I'll run it along the edge there to help soften that line so I'm going to do that around the lines but not too much because I still want it to appear rather bold the line okay so <clears throat> moving on then we just kind of keep adding basically we keep adding red this time we're going, going to add some crimson red um, to where's my popsicle stick to get this next deep hue and to kind of give it some new Chewiness, if you will. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna put. We, can you put this in your. Oh, sorry, you need that. You, you can mix that. Join this. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Tommy. Okay, so I just got some crimson red. And I'm going to pull some of that first color that I mixed and, oops, I covered up the other stuff. Oh. Okay. Chloe says, Amy Pierce is the only person I watched when I first started painting. I love her paintings. Aww, that's sweet. Thank you. And Dean loves your word, hueyness. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I've got that red color, and then I'm going to bring it over here, and I'm going to um, mix it with a little tiny bit of yellow, cadmium yellow, 
just a little dot. So I'm going to put it on the side there and then pull it in. That's so pretty, Mama. Okay, so I've grabbed some yellow, I'm bringing it in. It's kind of giving me a more peachy tone. You know, when you mix. So oh. I'm pulling some of this and mixing it in with the red you gave uh -huh. me? Uh-huh, and then you can grab some of this yellow right here and mix that in if you'd like. And then let's just put some straight cadmium red or that Venetian red. And that's pretty close to these tones right there. So you can use that in your darker parts. Is this the yellow you're... Yeah. It's the cadmium yellow. So I've got these hues. We'll add some burnt umber. Put a little white in the burnt umber. Put that right there. And I'm going to have some red that I can just pull into my colors when I want it. So I'll do that for you too. So I'm just going to keep going, getting darker and darker and adding these layers. I've got this um, deep red. I'm going to pull some more red into it though. I want it a little more red than it is. Yeah. That's oh, really nice and close to those. You see. Is that too dark? You see. No, I think that's good. And then, because you've got this nice array, but I'd pull a little red into this one, like I just did right here. Okay. So pull some red into that. You can do it with your popsicle stick so you don't... Should I rinse this out? I would, because you, you don't want your brush too loaded with paint at the minute. Um, okay, so now I'm going to grab... Red into the this one? Yeah. Too much? Uh, you could put a little more, probably. Yeah. So I'm going to grab that peachy tone that we added yellow to. And I'm going to put it over here, actually. See how it's kind of yellowy right there? So that's where I'm going to put that color. I don't want it to look too yellowy, but... Actually, I'm going to put a little tiny bit more into it. It's very subtle. So I'm finding the places in here where I see a tiny bit of warmth. There's some right here in that shadow, so I'll pull some that actually is probably a little too yellow. We don't want it to be so yellow that it's distracting, so. Put some shadow. Kathy Lou was wondering how long you've been painting. She says your work is amazing. Oh, um, I've been painting for, how old am I? <laughs> About 14 years. I started after I, you know, flew the coop. I'm adding some more brightness up here. I, I, yeah. Um, I always enjoyed art, but had mostly done, like, drama in high school, and cause that's what my friends did. <laughs> but, um... After I left home and started just experimenting with paint and whatnot, then I discovered that that is actually where one of my biggest passions lies, is more in painting and art than in theater. How do you find your inspiration, Chloe's wondering? How do I find my inspiration? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I just pay attention to what, you know, makes me feel 
appreciative of uh, just just sparks my soul <laughs> so like when I was in the springtime when I was driving past all of these trees I would just stop and stare at them and uh, she's not kidding too we had to stop a lot <laughs> I'm not complaining <laughs> the kids had to too because I would just be I gotta take a picture of that tree stop 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 I gotta take a picture and the kids started um, helping me find magnolia trees and weeping cherry blossoms if you saw that video our two-year-old whenever he sees a tree with any kind of flowers he'll yell look a blossom a blossom tree it's really cute you're your grandmother's daughter <coughs> yeah well we were always having to stop and <laughs> And appreciate beauty. And appreciate beauty. <laughs> it's a good thing you've got Manny there to be so enthusiastic. The other kids liked it too, although, I mean, there was quite a bit of bribery, like, because we have this point system at home, and I would say, oh, if you can help me find these, like, five points for whoever can find the, a magnolia tree. So they would get excited. It's all part of the brainwashing, I guess. Just kidding. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> okay, so now you're doing a really good job with your wisps. Okay, now I'm actually going to go um, to this, to these colors right here with this color that I mixed with the burnt umber and the red. What so, brushes are you using right now? Right now I'm just using an angled size 4 brush. This is a Zen brush by Royale and Lang Nickel. Oh, that sounds fancy. They're pretty in silver and they were 60% off at Michael's. Woo! <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to pull. I'm going to start at the base. This isn't my final base color, but I'm going to start at the base of each petal. Bring this color in and pull it up into the brighter colors that I've been painting down and really paying attention like here there's this darker part where the lip comes up so we'll add a line there and that will help emphasize where the that lip is and then there's this tiny line over here too actually and we're just going to be layering 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 all of these colors so, don't feel like you're tied in by any single brush stroke. Even if you've covered up a part that should be brighter, just do what you've got to do to brighten it up. You can see it's kind of thin right there, so I'm going to be going back and just darkening it up, darkening it up or lightening it up. This is a little more magenta in here, so I'm going to pull this red color here. And... Now we'll just go through and blend all these colors. I think I don't have enough of this color that you used for all of your... I didn't mean to do this, but I really like... I've got this palette, and I put it on a paper plate, and check this out. I can just turn it like this <laughs> when I need a different color. Oops, that red color like that I didn't want. <laughs> all right, so taking my... Doing the same thing in each petal. Pulling it up into the colors I just laid down. And when I get to those colors, if I don't want it too mixed, then I lift, too blended, then I lift off, taper off. And I really, magnolias are nice because you don't have to worry about blending so that lines disappear because it's got all these liney, these veiny lines. So it gives you a little bit more freedom or it makes you so have what, to care a little bit what, how did you get that deeper red it's this color you mixed right there so it's the burnt umber which is basically a really dark brown uh -huh. mixed with um, crimson red so okay. cadmium 
so then I'll be doing different layers and actually the darkest color here is burnt umber with a little bit of white but I'll do that at the end so again if you cover up your light parts that shouldn't be light it's okay because you can fix it but if you can be careful not to it will save you some hassle okay so now I'm trying I don't really want to you know what I'm, I lost this let's see I think Chloe's trying to figure out how old you are because now she's asking what age you are when you start. I'm f I, I, I <laughs> was 18, 17. I'm 32, almost 33. It's so my birthday, <laughs> almost. Yeah. Almost. 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 It's my birthday. That means that you gave birth to me almost 33 years ago. Oh, I'm old. Thanks for doing that for me. I appreciate it. I'm no problem. <laughs> and you were able to survive her that long. Hey now. <laughs> well, the question is, can you survive me that long? Hey, time will tell. <gasps> so I survived her that long. You should be able to survive her that long. You guys way. are so nice to me. You lift me up well, when I can. I'm on mountains. Or... Okay. So luckily, I think you you did a good job with her. So. Well, thank you. Trying to redeem easier. yourself. <laughs> Yeah, that's part well, of the you're doing even a better job with her, so. <laughs> Woohoo! All right, wisping some of these brighter lines up here, like really emphasizing these I middle lines. I never thought that umber would turn into this color. That's Isn't really cool? nice. That's why these color maps are seriously and recipe guides are really helpful. I put a lot of time into figuring out the best recipes. Just ask Nate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How many nights he's gone to bed. Are you coming to bed soon? Baby cakes? Baby cakes? He's never That's called me baby cakes in Every his time. life. Oh, it's, just, it's just my, you know, Baby, baby pig, cakes, <laughs> pookie nose. Pookie nose, that's yeah. a new one. That's, no, that's nice. How about time. Amy Pastrami? Amy Pastrami. Yes, that was my name. I had some nicknames growing up. Amy Pastrami. Amy to blame me. Amy to blame me was a big one. One of your favorites. So, so my favorite. Yeah, we talk about that one in therapy. <laughs> <laughs> That's because her older brother could blame her for everything and... And you believed him. Remember? Was it your older brother or your oldest brother? Oh, good question. I would say my oldest brother. He was the one like to blame me for stuff. Mm -hmm. Just don't stack any quarters. <laughs> I was also told by my dad last night that I couldn't, I was not allowed to tell any stories. We weren't allowed to tell any stories about him today. What? Is that a story in and of itself? Did he not like the story that you told last night? I guess not. We told a story last time about... Sounds to me like he needs to come on here so he can... I know. Tell his own story if he <laughs> wants to. Okay, so I am over some of the darker reds, I am putting in some more pinky tones, less, less orangey. Need to emphasize some of those shadows some more. So that's what I'm going to do now. Wisp up lines. It's kind of in the awkward stage right now. I don't know that mine will ever... No, yours is... it's beautiful. So this is, you know, almost every time I paint it goes through some weird awkward stage where you're laying down the initial colors or figuring out tones. And that's where a lot of people stop painting because 
you know, they're looking at it like, this is not what I want it to look like. I can't do this. And then they give up. But, so, for all those people, many, many people who have asked for advice, my advice is don't give up during the awkward stages, you know? Just think about your teenage years and how awkward it was to be a teenager. And you just, you get through it. And then you're this beautiful... <laughs> yeah, I'm so entertained by like myself. Birds right too. Now. You know, I used to raise pigeons, and <laughs> when they first come out of their eggs, they're so pretty, they're cute, you know, so adorable. And then when they get to, you know, like a week to two weeks old, uh -huh. they're hideous. Yeah, they look like little monsters, and then they, you know, grow up and get a, all for that awkward stage. Aww. Just like kids. Okay. So I've heard. <laughs> our, our kids are still too young. They haven't gotten to the. You know, this, They're the all super cute. Hey, 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 hey. The great thing about our kids, though, is that they're never going to go through any of the really hard, awkward, oh, I'm hideous sure. things. I'm sure they won't. They'll just continue on being perfect little angels. Yeah. That is exactly the words I would use to describe them. Okay, so I've lost this brightness right there, so I'm going to add that back in. Is it kind of like you feel like you've lost that love and feeling? Uh-huh. <laughs> you know me so well. See, I, exactly what you said, I am like, I can't do this. Never surrender. Layer, layer, layer. You calling me a layer? Layer, layer, layer. Wisp, wisp, wisp. dark lines in this triangular shape here. Okay. I'm going to add some brightness back in some of my spots. And after I do the brightest spots, then I'll go put some darker tones in the bottom and up throughout. So going back to my brightest color, really going to re-emphasize re some of those spots. This one kind of comes over here further. So pretty already. What's that? Mm-hmm. Yay, thanks, baby. No, don't mess it up. <laughs> Where else can I emphasize at the moment? Put some brightness back in that little guy. Back in here, just wisp some. Some over here. Maybe a little over here in this petal. Just a tiny bit. That one's a little too bright over there, so I'm gonna. But actually this peachy one with the yellow, I gotta talk louder, sorry, I'm getting into that mode where I'm really concentrating <laughs> and it's 
sometimes hard for me to remember to talk up loudly or say what I'm doing. So, help me remember, everybody. Well, Heidi says that she's totally brand new to art of any kind, and she took up art journaling recently and is addicted to YouTube videos and all the art forms. She can't get enough of watching you paint. Aww. Thanks. So I think you need to make sure you're putting out enough <laughs> to keep her entertained. Okay. Deal. So I've, like, lost my flowers more scrunched up. So this petal back here, I've got to make sure that... I am changing my proportions based off of how I've changed. I've changed my flowers based off. Change my shape based off of how I've changed my proportions of the flower and colors and whatever. Okay. Yeah. That's a lot brighter right there. And a lot brighter up here. Again, I'm going to do the really thin lines at the end. Though I will put a little bit more white within the flower. And my flower is kind of scrunched up too. Oh, yours looks so pretty. Here you go. If you need to pull that in anyway. So, there's some really bright parts here. I'm going to grab some white, mix it with that brightest color we did, and pull that through to emphasize the brightness of some of these, especially the highlights. And I'm letting it mix with the pink a little bit so that it's not just white, if that makes sense. Letting it fade in a little bit. I need some more. Can I steal some of yours? I gave you tons. Thanks. Oh, sharing. So nice. <laughs> sharing is caring. no shadows in that. That sun is just beating right through that. I need some of those, that pinky color to come up through those veins, through the petal, to emphasize the little veins. And the wisps and lines back in there. What color did you do this? Because it seems like a more yellowy... Yeah, so there's a tiny bit you've got... Isn't the, Did you put a little yellow in that? Yeah. But that, so that's it. That's... But that seems too pink to me. Does it? It's not very, like if you look at the color map, it's, where is it? 
it's still they all still look very pinky. There's uh -huh. just a yellow, slightly warm undertone. What is that one? These are all part of the background. Uh -huh. So this is all of the f colors in the blossom itself. Okay. So don't worry about those. Just these middle colors here. Okay. So I think I've long gone not done that color. What colors was it again? White and I can't read it. Which one? That one. That's a, that is your very first color that right. you mixed. It's just, yeah, but it's long. It's white here. You could have. I've got tons of it right there. I'm gonna grab your toothpick or popsicle stick. That <laughs> paper looks really cool, Amy. What is it? Where'd that come from? What paper? Come with all those colors on it you were just looking at. <laughs> That's part of the download reference guide. This one right here. You can find the downloadable link. It's this one right here. In the description. Yep. Wait, you made that? I sure did. <laughs> That's cool. You're so nice to me. You're so cool. You're so nice to pull. I'm gonna just spring up a little more now that it's dried a little bit. Some of my brightest, brightest parts in the petals and in the petals. Doesn't seem dark enough for that shadow. Which one? This this one you just gave me. That that's you said the very is the lightest. I mean, oh, that's the lightest right. right here. Yeah. So then it's this one right here that's a little darker, and then it gets darker, and that's the very darkest. Okay, so now I'm going to put my deepest tone. Actually, first, I'm going to bring some of the bright tiny thin lines around the petals inside the flower or within the silhouette of the flower. I'm not going to do the ones outside quite yet. What kind of paint are you using? This is acrylic paint. I mean it's um, Grombacher Academy. That's a specific brand that I'm using. But So this little line will just help emphasize where the petals separate from each other and where the light illuminates that color. I'm gonna pull some lighter or some pinker colors into some of those so it's not quite so dark or so light. Add some more pink veins and some of my darker parts. We talk about those in therapy too. <laughs> your darker parts. <laughs> I'm starting to think maybe we should go to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Funny guy. I married a funny guy. All right. Bring a tiny bit. Oops, that's way bright. Lighten that back up a little bit. Okay, now for the darker. Wipe that off. I need a little drink. Oh, so pretty, Mama. So um, when you're painting, it's a good idea to every once in a while step back and look at it. Since I'm really close, would you mind showing me the screen? Um, can you make it a little bigger for me, honey pie, so I can look at how it's turning out from a distance? 
so I have a little different perspective. Mom, if you look up there, you can see what it looks like from further away. Oh, that's cool. Because, you know, your perspective always changes. So, thank you, that was very helpful. <laughs> okay, so now I am going to... I like looking at it from further away. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my burnt umber. I'm going to pull some of the brighter color that we mixed in the beginning and mix it with the burnt umber. I may have brightened it too much, so I'm going to add. Actually, I'll pull some of this red color in too. So those colors are just <coughs> harmonious. I'll pull some of that for the Heidi's wondering what the difference is between this Grumbacher and like Liquitex or Golden, and why you chose um, this one. I chose these ones today because I do like the way they feel. They were on sale, which helped my motivate me. <laughs> um, but the this is a level two. What does that mean? Professional paint. It means that, um, sorry, I'm trying to think about this color while I'm trying to answer this question, but the, the quality of paint is, falls within three levels, usually three different levels, and this is the middle level, so, um, but it will just help the way that the colors blend and flow and if you notice I'm gonna add a little black in there to darken up a bit. If you notice um, if you get really really cheap no that's way too dark. If you get really really cheap paint then you're going to be add adding layer upon layer upon layer to get uh, the effect you want, if you ever even get there. Because the paint is so thinned down, or and the, the pigment of the paint isn't as high quality. It's just harder to get a nice painting. It's possible, it's just a little harder. So for someone, this is Heidi's question, Okay. or follow-up, I guess, is what it is. For someone just starting out and for mm -hmm. art journaling, Liquitex is okay to use? Yeah. Yeah, Liquitex has its own level of quality also. I mean, you can get really basic Liquitex cheap paint, and you can get really, really high-quality expensive Liquitex brands of acrylic paint, so... That all kind of just depends, but yeah, use anything. I'm. Um, things do make a difference. I won't say that it that there's no difference between the expensive paint and the cheaper paint, or the higher quality paint, you know, the higher level of paint and the not so high level. But don't let that deter you from trying, because you can make it work. If you if you watched my moon video that was quite popular. A lot of people liked it a lot. I just used craft acrylic paint, like the ones in the tube, and it worked great. Okay, so now I've got my deepest hue, which is this dark burnt umber. I put a tiny bit of red. I'm just going to bring a little, a few strokes from the bottom up into the other colors. Really trying to just blend that in. I'm gonna bring it to the edge here so it emphasizes the edge of that petal a little bit. And over here it's a little darker and thicker. But art journaling is is really fun because you can do a variety of different things. 
And you're definitely not tied down by anything. If it moves you, do it. And don't worry about rules because in art, rules are made to be broken. In fact, I mean, there are, when you're dealing with art supplies, there's good things to remember when you're using them. Um, like, you know, your acrylic paint will get darker as it dries. That's just help for, helpful information. But you just got to do what moves you because that's really what art and creativity is about. It's not about following standards or rules or guidelines. My very first painting I ever did, and I don't recommend this, but just to emphasize my point a little bit, was my first oil painting I did on a piece of paper. And that is definitely not the best idea, but I really I... enjoyed it and it helped me find joy in oil painting. And then from there I was able to learn things and figure out what was best, but what were you going to say? What makes it a problem to do it on paper? Well, it the oil will disintegrate the paper and seep through the background, so it won't last. I still have that oil painting and it looks great, but, you know, in 500 years from now, it won't exist. Like that mummy that we saw on TV the other day. Well, that mummy still exists, though. <laughs> Ha. Or, and you can experiment too. Like once I was doing oil paint, I used to do exclusively oil painting till I had babies and I didn't want them around it. Anyway, or when I was pregnant and didn't want to be around the fumes. Um, anyhow, I, one day I thought, I wonder what would happen if I used olive oil with oil paints. What for? What was your... Motivation. Just to help it flow. I just wanted it because you, you have all these oils. I was out of the normal oils you use. I use like the linseed oil. So I'm like, I'm going to try it with olive oil. So it glided beautifully. Like the colors, they were fluid. They flowed. They stayed. Um, I was just able to mold them. And they didn't dry too quickly and they looked gorgeous but then it turned out that they never dried never ever I waited like two months and that painting never dried I finally just threw it away <laughs> and it got more yellow but I I love that I tried it out I'm sad that I don't have that painting because I think it was a cool painting so do you have Venetian it's or... this color right here this deep red card yeah Can so you... here's the thing with when you're getting different colors of paint, companies will call them different things. That's another useful thing for the color guide is you can say, okay, well, I can't find Venetian red, but hey, look, this cadmium red deep color looks pretty darn close, if not exactly. So then you just get that and it's okay and you make it work. Okay, everybody? All right. <laughs> You are talented. Can you believe this is her first painting? Yeah, but I never I get... I can. I actually can believe it. I never get <laughs> stuff done because I am too... Let me brighten up this shadow. Perfectionistic? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put a few more deep tones. I'm going to emphasize around inside some of the around the border of some of the petals. And they actually come up right against the lighter tone, which again, I'll emphasize at the very end, but this will help make it look like that sun is just shining right through. Let's bring that up to the edge there. I'll bring this one up too right here. You can always pull whatever color you want into it. I'm pulling some red, just a few, just a little bit. Maybe I'll pull some up through that mid vein again. It keeps disappearing on me a little bit. Now it's too red, I don't want it so red. So I'll add some pink back in. Oh, 
there's definitely some deeper tones in here that I've missed. So it, you say it, or cover it, it, up. it dries darker then? Yes, a, a little bit darker, which you can always test it before. Unless you can't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But just go for it. That's my advice to people. Just try it. Just experiment. Don't let fear hold you back. And if it turned, I actually was thinking about doing a video where I show all of my fails. Because I have a lot of them. Just a, a big blooper video? Yeah. That'd be great. Or just like a video. Look, look at this painting and this painting and this painting. There's a reason you never saw a tutorial of it. Because I couldn't figure it out or I couldn't do it. Right, it looked but horrible. remember all the ones that you ended up posting that you didn't even like and then other people liked them? Yeah, that happens so a lot. you just need to post them. Don't tell them it's a blooper though because <laughs> they might like it just how it is. That's a really interesting thing. You know what else is interesting? So I. I did a tutorial of how to paint magnolias before. Um, some of you may or may not have seen it. We'll put a link, actually. But, um, so, how many? 650,000 people have seen it already, or something like that. That's a lot of people that have learned how to paint these, these magnolias. So that painting that over half a million people have watched me paint on YouTube and learned how to paint themselves and done classes and all sorts of things, I, it took me like three years to sell that thing. And I started it out at a price I thought was pretty reasonable and then I could not like sell it, but I thought it was really pretty. Finally, just sold it for a few bucks at a boutique because I needed room, although now I'm like, I should have kept it. It's so pretty, and I didn't sell it for what it was worth, and I don't like that. I don't like when people don't give me what I feel like it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to actually take this a little bit of a gray. I think it's hard just because it's a little bit personal, you know? Yeah. It's not just a painting. Do you? Do you know? You guys don't even appreciate it. Other people appreciated it. So, so unappreciated. Okay, can I see a perspective again from you? Looking, looking okay. I'm gonna get some of this. It's basically the deepest hue that I got, I'm mixing it with my brighter color from the beginning so I get this grayish mauve tone and I'm going to put it in some of my shadows like right here where the branch is coming through maybe behind a little bit I don't want too much of this color because we don't want it to muddy up the beautiful reds and pinks that we've laid down but if that if the branches are shading the flower, there may be a tiny bit of that gray in there. Just a tiny, tiny bit. I don't think I could emphasize that enough. Tiny, tiny bit. Even pull a little bit of red in there. This one just a tiny tiny bit oops not that much brighten that back up a little what 
What time do we have, Nate? Um, 1023. All right. We should probably start moving on in a second. <laughs> Did you just use that gray color? Uh-huh. Okay, stop. No! It's taking away. Wait, look at the perspective a little bit, I think. Let's stand up. It's. I think you're using it a little too liberally. Well, I'm going to go back over and oh. add color on top. Okay, I'll let you do your thing. You do your thing. I'm going to keep going for the okay. fine folks at home, okay? Because I think okay. that you can figure it out. Okay. Um, you don't need to follow along with me. So everybody watch me and then watch my mom too because she's actually, she's putting some nice undertones in right now. And that, is that what you're doing? Uh -huh. And then you're going, that's a great idea. Well, I was trying to match the sh actual shadow on the picture. Yeah. That's where it gets like, um, so these colors are pretty exact. But if we look, actually that color gets pretty close. So you can always, mom, take your color map, watch, and paint a little on it with the color you're choosing. Uh -huh. So find like, okay, what tone is that? And then you paint and say, how close am I? You know? Uh-huh. Well, that's a good idea. Okay. So. All right. I'm going to move on to the branches. Um, so the branches and the leaves are basically all these kind of warm green tones. So... Is there a palette? Actually, I'll just use this plate. Put this palette aside with my red colors. And... Um, Amy, do you like... Do you like oil better than acrylic? I've, I've noticed you've done a lot of acrylic lately. But. Well, I, I love them for different reasons. I love oil... I love oil paint because you can... Um, the colors don't dry so fast and you can just make them flow together more easily, I think. And and I think that, you know, when you start using the different kinds of oils with, with your oil paints, then it just starts looking, the colors just seem rich and nice. Um, and I like acrylics for the opposite effect. I like that they dry so fast because then you can layer and layer and layer and get things done in a more timely manner. Um, which with oil, you've got to wait quite a long time for layers to dry, sometimes even days, depending on how thick you paint it. And I'm starting, I, I used to you've, use oil exclusively because I loved how um, how fluid they were and everything and how I could just wait so long between layers but having kids acrylics is definitely more convenient but I do like it I love acrylic I love all paint I'm going to try this paint out um, that this acrylic paint that you can actually re-wet after it dries just with and then, water? yeah, well, you can use water, but or they've got this company has, um, they have a little spray that you can use that a spritzer, re a spritzer <laughs> <laughs> that will make those colors wet again, so that you can mix them more. It's pretty interesting. I'm excited to try it out. Okay, so let's mix up these greens and browns. So, um, let's grab some white. I'm just going to put my main colors in the middle. We've got white and ultramarine blue. Got some permanent light green. Got some, where is it? My orange. Did I not get it out? 
maybe it's over there okay and yellow ochre over here oh i think i got two yellows instead of an orange but i'll have nate hand that to me in a sec and cerulean blue oh, wait open What else? Anything? Okay. I'm also going to use the paint that I mixed in the for the bottom of the magnolia also to help bring those colors. So I'm actually going to start with one of my middle tones. So let's take some Cadmium yellow, which I should put on my plate. Just get a little here. Let's see, we need oh, quite a bit. Basically, 16 parts of this yellow to one part. Cerulean blue. Cerulean. I don't even know how you pronounce it, really. That's a lot right there. That's too much. Okay, so let's mix that up. Hey, will you reach in that bag and find me the cadmium orange, my dear? What bag are you talking Behind about? Behind you on the floor. Okay. white yellow quite blue. I'm gonna pull a tiny bit of not for a million cadmium red DQ it should be just orange orange how's that looking I don't see when it says cadmium orange I see Vermilion is the only orange. Oh, one. vermilion. Okay, that's fine. Okay. It's the same basic. All right, so there's quite. no cadmium orange, are you sure? There's a cadmium red. Is there another bag? There's magenta. Yeah, that's pretty orange. That's way too orange. That's okay. Okay, so I've got this green tone here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry, I'm not familiar with your filing system. <laughs> so the bag on the floor. Okay, now I'm gonna grab some yellow ochre here. I'm getting my darkest hue. Yellow ochre. Five parts yellow ochre. Three parts ultramarine blue. And two parts white. Oops, I just muddied all those colors. It's okay. Let me grab some more. Hmm, that's actually that color up there. Okay, so that's a medium hue. A lot more blue. It was too much white. But I need a little bit more. Yellow ochre. I'm going to put some 
orange on my plate also. to be darker, so I'll grab, oh, grab in some more ultramarine blue. This one is mostly ultramarine blue with a teeny bit of um, yellow ochre. How do you measure your parts? Three parts, or actually, just kidding. Um, how do I measure them? Mm -hmm. Well, you can use tools. I'm just eyeballing things right now, so I think if it says five parts blue or yellow ochre to three parts ultramarine blue, then I tr just try to take. I just try to eyeball it. But they have actual tools you can use, like little rulers where you can like measure out the perfect amount, but I just try to eyeball it until it turns out the color I'm looking for. And I actually think I'm going to pull in a little bit of that darker red that I mixed up. So I want it quite dark. Oops, that's pretty good right there. And then I'll use this for my deepest tone over here. And some, you can see I've already got some of the tones are pretty close. So now I am going to grab actually my smaller angled brush. That's all cleaned. So I'm gonna use the angled brush, angled brush again, and I'm gonna wet it a little bit. I'm gonna grab my lightest hue, which is this kind of. Actually, I should pull some more white into that. It's this light green. What are you painting now? The background or the branches? Well, this is actually, I'm painting the branches and little buds here. So, um, all right, so I'm going to take this lightest green color that I just mixed and I'm just going to, I'm going to drag it through solid color through all of my branches. For my undertone. So you do the lighter color as your undertone? I'm going to, yeah. You can you can experiment with different ways. I mean, if you want, you could and people can see what it's like. For time's sake, I'm going to do the lighter one so that we don't have to worry too much about layer upon layer upon layer upon layer to get the desired hue. But you should experiment with going from light to dark and dark to light. That's another one. You have to go light to dark. You have to. Uh, no, you don't. Sorry, but you don't. <laughs> it may make certain techniques easier that you're trying to accomplish, but there are other techniques that you can do going dark to light. So why so. would you go light to dark? Um, because w when you go light to dark, one of the reasons you do it is to make it less difficult to get the darker hue on top, or the lighter hue, I mean, that you need. Because once you start trying to get a lighter hue over a darker hue mm -hmm. or tone, then it just, it requires a lot more layering and 
skill with knowing how colors react to each other and it's fine like you can get there but if you're just trying to keep it pretty simple and get to your desired tones quicker or more simply like I said then we'll go light to dark so yeah I'm just basically just coloring in this light tone so did Andre come and visit you last night? no he didn't but he came today did he? Our, my brother just got engaged last night. Congratulations! Yes. Where am I? Oh, that's actually a blossom right there. But we won't worry too much about it. And here you can really take liberties. I mean, you can copy the photo exactly if you want. Or you can put your own tweak and spin on it. Or put details where you would like to see them that maybe they're not on the photo. Or take some details out of the photo that are maybe distracting from the painting. From the artwork. Okay, tell me. Say less is more. Less is more. <laughs> going to do right there. So it's my, pretty pretty. My trouble is I fuss stuff to death. But that's that's okay. In fact. I like that you are because I think that you should be as careful as you want to be. I mean, not so careful that you never get it done, but so if is, you want to take your time, take your time. So is this is that the color you're doing right now, or is the next one down? Um, it's kind of somewhere in between there. If you look here. Okay. And I'm not too fussed because I know that I'm going to be layering and layering. Okay, so white over it. But yeah, you take your time. I I am trying to go a little quicker for those who are following at home yes. or in the video later. Um so you don't have to do that. Yeah, but if I don't do it finish it today, it won't ever get finished. Not with that attitude, Mom. Uh, I, I'm very familiar <laughs> with my MTO. How is it? Mo, M, M O O M O. No. <laughs> oh, mode of operation. Oh. Okay, so, and then. It can be modus operandi, which is M O. <laughs> M O. That's it. There it is. White and then cardamom, cadmium, cadmium. Oh, sorry, my glasses aren't too good. Which one? This one? Yeah. Well, no, the the second one of the top one. This one? No, this one. So you've got. Did you say? Five parts white, one part cadmium light yellow, which is this yellow right here, where you've got yellow over there also. Okay. And then one part. Cerulean blue. Cerulean. Which is this lighter blue right here. Oh, whoops. Kind of. Okay. But you're basically just making a green. You could also probably just take a lighter green right there and put a tiny bit of blue in it and white. 
These color recipes are pretty spot on, but they're not the only way to achieve the colors that we're getting. So don't um, don't feel like it if you tweak your recipe a little bit that it'll be wrong. Especially you know, if only... you're using different brands and colors of paint. I mean, but I have always be been a... very intimidating by intimidated by even trying to paint. Well, do you still feel that way? Look well, when that. it comes to mixing colors, yeah, I do. Yeah, but I'm getting more bold. Okay, so five parts white. <laughs> One part yellow. And the reason I don't worry too much about exact measurements is because you can always add a little more here, a little more there. So it's not like if you screw it up the first time, you're doomed. You just tweak. You become a tweaker. You raised me, so you can get mad, but I'm sorry. it's your fault. <laughs> oh, that that matches your color exactly. Oh, <laughs> oh. That's so cute. Just looks like a little too much blue. Yeah, you just keep Did you see how many di different how many times that I added and more and more colors? Look at that. It's getting really close. So I'm taking up the whole plate to mix one color. That's okay. We got more plates. We got no. you covered. Got a whole stack of them. Yeah. So just let us know what you need. Grandma had amazing talent. Yes, she did. My grandma was a painter, my mom's mom. Painter, writer, photographer. You name it. Poetress, poetry. Poet. Poet. Mm -hmm. Yep, we've got a lot of creative blood, both sides of my family. Which. So, did you ever paint with her? Nope. How come? Um, it's never an option. Oh. See, I gotta remember that because the kids are always asking me to, to paint with me. But it's usually inconvenient when they ask me and I always say, yeah, yeah, but let's do it another time. <laughs> and then that another, that another, how do you spell another? <laughs> That time doesn't come as often as I promise, you know. Don't worry about it. Art attack. <laughs> it's just paint falling off the walls. <laughs> <laughs> I thought duct tape would be a good way to go. I guess yeah. not. So I'm going to Pocatello on Wednesday. Why? Grandma's sister passed away. Mm -hmm. How's she doing? She's doing pretty well. Good. I was actually thinking that I should have her do one of these with me. She would probably love that because have you ever my, seen her artwork? Yeah, that's why I was thinking that. So my mom's stepmom, who she's talking about right now, is also an amazing painter. I thought we should bring her on. Okay. Okay, so I've got my basic my first layer of paint laid down. Now I'm just going to go around these colors that I've created light to dark. I keep almost drinking my water that's that I've been washing my brush in. Anyway, I'm going to go light to I dark. I don't drink that. I don't think you'd enjoy <laughs> it. And as you can see here, I mean it's, it's very much, at first glance, just a silhouette with this light around it.
but we are going to try to emphasize the dimension and the roundness of the branches with our color. So, did you use a different brush than you're using a different brush? I'm, than I'm this using giant the, one, huh? there's a smaller angled brush right here. That would be easier. Yeah, and there's other ones here. I might do all the twigs, branches, and flowers with it, my angled brush. But there's also this um, liner brush for, you could do veins of your flowers with that, but I don't think it's necessary at this point. Okay, so now I'm going to do what I just told you I was going to do. Amy, hey, why are your branches all bright green? <laughs> because it's my undertone, and now I'm going to build upon this dark green. I want um, the, the brightness of the branches to be there, but subtly. So, Subtle brightness. So is it like a backlighting kind of a thing? No, it's actually within the branches itself. There is this light around the branches. That's what I mean, because that's kind of a backlit. Right. You're getting that glow from the light from behind in the mm -hmm. photo, right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to go look for some of actually the brighter parts. And I'm going to take my second tone, and I'm just going to add some emphasis where I see a little, like around the little bulbs of the buds around some of the bumps of the branches and again it's all very subtle Emmy says my Nana was an amazing watercolor artist along with my great aunt and my great cousin I have a lot of wonderful very talented artists in my family line as well the artist Jean skipped my mom's generation and hit me and my brother oh, that's uh -huh, nice. weird but <laughs> Happy we got their talent. I grew up with my Nana's gorgeous watercolor paintings all over our house. Aww. That just gave me an idea. Who was that? Sorry. That was Emmy from Sassy Trash Creations. So, so, I love that name. So why don't we, on my Facebook page, maybe this week sometime, we can pay tribute to those in our lives who were artistic that came before us or that motivated us in whatever way and we can share about them on my Facebook page maybe put pictures of their artwork if we have access to them that would be nice wouldn't That'd it? Be cool. so find some stuff you can share with us and then um, I'll put a post later that would go well with having your grandma on for a live stream yeah do something like that okay so make sure that when you're adding this second the next layer that you're not covering up all of the bright green underneath that you're letting just a little bit, bit of it pop through but not not too much actually I'm gonna use a different the angle is giving me too many lines right now I need my colors to blend so I'm going to take my pointed round brush this the so the angled brush was nice for filling it in but let's, I don't want these layers or the colors that I'm using now to be too harsh. So I've got, I should wet it first a little bit. I've got my small pointed round brush. This is a size two. Oh no, that's a level two, size Z43R. But it's just kind of a medium size. And I'm going to pull those tones through, try to blend them in. Not too thick. I think I've got too much paint a little bit. Okay. The nice thing about painting branches and trees and things like that mm -hmm. is that it really doesn't matter if you get exactly like like what the the proportions are exactly like the picture because branches are just generally all over there. Yeah. Especially if you look at my trees that uh, have not been pruned. <laughs> That's how you get that really nice organic feel from them, right? Yes. So 
So I, I do want these colors blended. I also want some brush strokes to show a little bit. Not so that it's distracting, but I, you know, we're working really hard to match this to the photo, but I do want it to have its own personality as a painting. And one of the ways you can do that is by leaving some brush strokes visible. non-biological cousin, step-cousin, that is an amazing artist. Yeah, who? Uh, his name is Jay Adamson. Yeah. He really is amazing, his artwork. He sells it. Yeah. And his prints are like the print of one that I want of Lone Peak. Mm-hmm. Five hundred dollars for the print. Whoa! And so, so for Christmas, dear. Oh. <laughs> Don't wait for that one to hatch. Go ahead and count that chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you crush my dreams. <laughs> so if I've got too much paint on my brush. Then I just wipe it on the paper towel. All is good. So who, I want to hear about other people's inspirations for art too. Maybe those for creativity. Well, Heidi says her grandma was an artist as well. That she was a professional cake baker. Aww. And she did her art by decorating cakes. And Chloe says she has a similar story to Emmy. Yeah. Um, although she didn't elaborate on it. Oh. Aunt Jamie is an amazing artist. Yeah. Fun fact is that my first ever art video was a cake decorating video. People hated it though. <laughs> is it still there? I, the I sombrero one. I love the sombrero. I thought it was great. People, thumbs down to all over the place. Really? Like, how dare I? Well, the groom loved it and that was what was important. Aww. It was a groom's cake sombrero hat and it looked like a hat people didn't need it for a while I had a dream of being a cake maker for a while till I realized how many dishes you had to do you just really wanted the groom to have to eat his hat right <laughs> you guilty Now we're getting into the awkward stage of the branch a little bit, the branches.
Yeah, I think the rounded pointed brush is definitely a better choice for adding the layers of color into the branch afterward. Surely. Okay, now I'm moving on to my next, actually before I do that, I am going to put in, like, make sure this part of my flower here is really nice and bright green, or the little stem coming up into the flower. So I am going to put some green in there, the, my brightest green, and up in here too. I really don't want that to be lost when I paint my other layers. The green is such a nice contrast with the pinks and reds of the um, blossom. Okay. All right, now for the next. Did you get a water bottle? Uh -huh. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so you still want to do the, the um, Sculpturing one. Mm -hmm. My mom. You want to tell them about it? Ask the people if they'd like to learn. Well, sculpturing is really my first love. And. Didn't know that about you. Yeah. She's very talented. And we could do one where you make a block of plaster Paris. And and then and then you just carve away mm -hmm. from the plaster plaster of Paris. It's something that kids can do, and mm -hmm. and um, so you carve away what you don't want there, and sculpture that way. I did that in high school. That sounds way fun. I'm in. But I've sculptured with clay. We could sculpture with clay. We could sculpture with. There's actually a really fun thing I did in high school that I thought might be fun for kids. You get you get white bread and you pull off the crusts of the white bread and you break it into little pieces and it takes a lot of white bread. And then you mix it with Elmer's glue and you just keep mashing, 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 mashing until it turns into a sculpting medium. And then you sculpt something out of that. So bread and glue? Mm -hmm. White bread and glue. Fun. Wow. That does sound fun. <clears throat> okay, so I'm slow. Second color. What was your second color in there? So you basically just take the color you had and mm -hmm. uh, add a little bit of ultramarine blue and 
yellow umber to it. Or yellow ochre, I mean. Okay, ultramarine blue. Mm -hmm. That's the same blue as I had before. Yep. On the topic of inspiration, Chloe says, my aunt inspires me. She paints, crochets, and sews. She's great. That's cool. In fact, she's the reason I do that stuff as well as my Nana. Aw. Yeah, everybody start collecting photos. There's something you can share with us on Facebook. I kind of sculpt with knitting, too. See, you can tell because I even brought that knitting into my sculpting or sculpting into my knitting oh, true my mom makes amazing hats crochets every knits of money that's not turning out as dark as yours you just keep adding um Well, you're looking. This one is what you're trying to get, right? So I it's need got more a little blue. more, yeah, a little more blue. You just keep going, keep adding, and you'll get there. Never give up. Okay, be so careful when you're adding adding the layers of color that you don't cover up all the colors that you've already laid down or else you'll lose the nice dimension that those sh different shades will give you. Unless of course you hate the ones you've got on there already. That's true. Gosh. But none of us will ever have that problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not turning that. Ooh, it's kind of minty. Yes. Try more. Ultra, did you try more um, of the yellow ochre? I just put more in that. Minty fresh. So I'm going to try to make sure that the outside of my branches are quite dark and then the inside gets brighter. You wanna, well, how's that? Need them. What do I need to get it that you need brownish? Much more. Much Here, more. Take a the... big scoop of mine. Yeah. Well <laughs> 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 You just that, put a glob in. That, that was clever. <laughs> I put it in the wrong pile of paint. I do that all the time. Ah, okay, it's getting closer. So I needed more of the ochre yellow than the... Yeah. Bubble, bubble, boil in trouble! It's still pretty light. It's okay. Keep keep adding. Oh wait, you're doing cerulean. You need the. You're using the wrong shade of blue. That's why. You need ultramarine blue. Isn't that that? Nope, that is cerulean blue. Ooh. So sorry, I didn't catch that. Before. No wonder. It's all your fault. I know. Amy to blame me. See? Okay. Still valid, even to this day. <laughs> it's true. I know it's one of my favorite pastimes. I don't want to take the blame for myself, you know, so it's great to have you around. You're welcome. I know you were about to say thank you, so I'm just helping you. To the I was lunch. trying to express gratitude. <laughs> Mm 
Did you mix it in with the cerulean? Yeah. You're getting closer. Just need a little more. A little more. Yellow ochre. Can you give me a, can I, a perspective shot, Nate? Is that okay? Don't get shot. All right, all right. This is what I was trying to tell you earlier. I think it would be great to have a monitor that you could see. Yes, that would be great. You're so, so smart. Oh, you know it. <laughs> Are we getting there? Are we there yeah. yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Close. Just a little more here. Take a Careful not to get the green underneath, but grabs. Oh, you've got some still. Yeah, so so more yellow. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Emmy's got more fun things. She says, "Fun facts for the sake of conversation." My nana and aunt were watercolor artists. My cousin Margie is still going at 94 years young, and uses all kinds of different mediums. That's awesome. I hope that's me. And her brother is crazy wicked with a pencil. I don't use a tra traditional cloth canvas. My canvas is always wood. Oh, that's oh, kind of cool. Oh, that is cool. I like I like it when people have a little their own personal flair and things. Yeah. Oops, too close. I used to do soft sculpture, mm -hmm. where I um, was really very popular way back when to you stuff a nylon stocking with with um, batting or, mm -hmm. or stuffing. Oh yeah. You remember those? I do. I remember some of yours. Puppets or Yeah, well you, dolls. we made we made the cabbage patch dolls oh, yeah. and cool. And um, I made Santa Clauses and witches and I still have some of those. Pretty awesome. Okay, now I'm gonna take, remember that burnt umbery red color from the flower. I'm gonna pull that in as my deepest hue. And I'm gonna pull it right to the edge of my branches. So that's, so it, you're in. just doing that a plain just the plain burnt umber or? No, well, it's from, it's the darkest hue that we mixed for the flower. Oh, okay. And um, so I'm going to just really emphasize the depth in my branches with those. And because I want, in the end, to put that nice white light contrast around the branches, I want the branches need to be quite dark in order for that show. contrast to show up. Yep. But here's where I want it to. I really want the colors. I guess I should have started on the other side so I didn't, wasn't dragging my arm through. So I go in around the edge and then I'll just wiggle my brush around to bring it through into the other colors. It's quite dark right here at the top. Almost covers it all up. Really? You just get this silhouette and then it's brightens up this big bulbous thingy. Grandma also used to do um, mosaics 
And we used to always look for broken glass and beads and a lot of broken glass, broken tile. And she made some pretty amazing mosaics. That's really cool. Using like concrete. That's really cool. I've actually been thinking that maybe we should be saving all the dishes and stuff that get broken. Mm -hmm. Because that happens a lot when you've got little kids. And me. <laughs> okay. So is that color you're putting on there, is that your fourth color or third? That is my fourth. So I'm way behind. It's okay, take your time, don't rush it. This is another time, like, you know, if you're initially looking at the this photo of magnolias, you look at the branches and you think either just really dark brown or even um, black, like this is just silhouette, but it's mostly made up of greens. It's pretty. What's your favorite thing to paint, Amy? my favorite thing to paint um ah what a hard question I don't I don't know that I have a favorite thing honestly I really like trees but I I, I don't have a favorite thing I like lots of things you have done a lot of trees I have I do enjoy flowers. it quite well I really like that lavender painting that you did the lavender of the girl walking yeah, through the lavender so field. beautiful i was just sorry i was just Thanks. looking at you and it's behind you mm -hmm. and i went whoa there it is and it's just beautiful <laughs> thank you yeah i find i get that question a lot and i find it quite difficult because i or like what's my favorite medium what's my favorite this i don't have one and i know it's, it's been interesting being in the art world because a lot of people ex have these expectations that if you are an artist or a painter or whatever, that you have your thing. You have your niche, you have your style. And, um, and it occurred to me the other day that, like, you don't have to have that. You can, you can enjoy dabbling in all sorts of different things and that it's okay if like something really drives you and you like to do it over and over again but really I get into things like I go through phases so for example what I went through my Mod Podge phase where I was like Mod Podging everything or my nail polish phase, fluid painting phase or I don't know. I let lots of different things excite me. I do enjoy flowers and blossoms and trees for sure. Okay, what was the next color you used? You did. Um. It's this kind of blue, so you take that color and add blue, maybe even a little burnt umber for yours. Like which, the darker blue? The darker, the ultramarine blue. Ultramarine. Mm -hmm. So, oops, sorry. Okay. So, 
Got to make sure that this, this stem coming into the flower doesn't get too dark, which I just let it get a little too dark. So I'm going to add some brightness back into it. Fade that up into the blossom a little bit. Oh. So sorry, I don't have a good answer to that. <laughs> but well, I'm offended. You better believe that I'm always taking pictures of things that ins that I find beautiful in nature. What about you? What are your favorite things to paint? Chloe likes trees. Trees? I don't know if that's her favorite, but she said she likes trees. So the question for everyone watching is... <coughs> Excuse me. If you had to be... Choose one subject... Subject... <coughs> <coughs> one subject matter to paint for the rest of your life, what would you choose? To paint? To paint, yep. What about you, Mom? I think I would like to paint people. People? Mm -hmm. I would choose life. Like the game? Nope. The board game? Nope. You'd just go on. Just life. You'd paint life? That way I'm not too boxed in. Because this whole choose one thing to no, paint. No, that's like <laughs> saying, that's like if you got one wish granted saying I'd wish for unlimited wishes. That's cheating. So. Well, you're going to have to put more restrictions on because Chloe says outdoor paintings. Does that, because you could put a lot of stuff into <laughs> outdoor paintings. So is that like cheating too? Like landscapes? Yes, you it's could cheating, have Chloe. Landscapes, you got people in the outdoors. It's true, it's You could cheats. have... You could have a house that's outdoor. Right, because you're not in the door. And, but then, like, you've opened the door and you're looking in. You could be outdoors and painting a picture of a door. <laughs> I think I, I would like to do people mm -hmm. because there's so much emotion. You like... That you can... So many different things you can do with emotion and mm -hmm. everything when you're... Painting people. Have you ever painted a person? Mama? Um, no. Oh, wait, isn't this your first painting? I've sculpted. That was a trick. I have a sculpt. I've sculpted. Yeah, she's sculpted some pretty amazing. I, think I saw a head in your storage room or something. <laughs> we, Nate saw a head in your storage room. <laughs> I mean, not an do actual do head. Do 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 do. <laughs> Yes, but there's one on the top of my bookshelf in my office as well. But have I seen? I know I've been in there. I just don't recall seeing. Thanks for noticing. If it's way up on top of your bookshelf, it's not exactly field of vision, you know. Well, especially in my office, there's so much there's other stuff. There's plenty of to things do. to look at. <laughs> A lot of yarn. <laughs> Chloe says, sorry, are landscapes cheating? No, that's okay. You can say landscapes. I mean, really, we could figure out how everything is cheating, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm almost done with the branches. Then we'll do a quick background. I don't think I'm going to make mine quite as detailed as the photo, but I do want a background so that I can emphasize the light around the flower and the branches. Oh, you know what I just thought would be cool? What? If you paint something kind of similar to this, but with your the moon background. Oh, ooh. Because it's, Mag it's kind of like yes. you've got the very close-up foreground. Oh. The magnolia with the moon Genius. in the back. I know I am, I know. You have to do it with me, though, is the rule. Mm hmm So, strap on your boots. What did I just paint up there? I don't know. I don't know what my boots are going to do for me in this, but... Michelle would do birds. Ooh, birds. Oh, you've got some pretty good bird paintings, too. I've got two, I think. Do I have more than two? Well, you've got some silhouettes of birds oh, yeah. and 
I did the owl last the week. The owl is a bird. <laughs> and then you've got that cardinal in the snow. That's cardinal, a good one too. Cardinal, I think. Yeah. Okay, so, oh. Ah. Just gonna drag some paint. Maybe it's, my branches are a little too bright. Okay, so this is pretty, pretty mama. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what would you paint, Nate? You gotta play the game. Um, well, I would. Paint. The problem is I've never done a painting for serious. You Can know? you do one with me, please? It's my dying wish. I've done pen pencil sketches as well. I've done, have you ever oh, seen yeah. any of my paintings? Yeah. Yeah, of course I have. I did one. You taught me how to draw. Ooh, Michelle says especially birds of prey. Mm. I like birds of prey. I've always liked them as a subject in general, not necessarily for. Yeah, I remember just in general. that's something that brought us together when we were dating. Our love for, like, watching hawks and mm -hmm. going to the. So you both became birds of prey. <laughs> You were my prey. Wah -ha. Don't I know it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I heard all about it. Well, at least I didn't have to try to guess it at any of the intentions. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it's nice. Very refreshing. Well, because when I when I tried to flirt with you subtly, you didn't really pick up my cues, so I had to like bash you in the face with my flirtation. Well, remember how much your dad helped, because he let me know. Was it our first meeting or our second meeting when he let me know that I was your husband? <laughs> oh, did I miss something here? You were there, but dad was, yeah, dad referred to him as my husband. When we were just dating. Like, he didn't even mean to. He wasn't trying to be funny or clever. <laughs> he really was just thinking Nate was already my husband. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe inspiration. Yeah. Um, Chloe's wondering, she says, random question, what's your favorite game? Me? Uh, well, I don't or know you. if you didn't specify. I mean, well, you two are me, having this conversation over there. For me, I really like Dragon Age Origins. It's a really great video game. Um, I haven't played it in a long time. It's not a really new game, but I haven't played video games in a long time. It's kind of, it used to be a big thing I did. And then, you know, we've got five kids. And it doesn't really quite fit in the schedule anymore. Yeah. Um... So now, probably, I mean, the squirrel game. The squirrel game? It's one of my favorites. Wait, what was it called? Collecting it? the air. I think it's just, is it squirrel? Where you collect the acorns, you spin it? And, yeah, oh, look, it just blue. Squir Sneaky squirrel. Sneak. Sneaky squirrel, yeah, that's a fun one to play with the kids. <laughs> um, oh, I'm that sure was she was there. probably really caring about what you... Well, I like to play your... sneaky squirrel with my husband. <laughs> Oh, another fun one's Phase 10. Not yes. really with the kids, but I like that one. What is it that we started playing Othello? Is that what oh, it's yeah, called? That was, that was fun. And then we stopped one. because Nate kept cheating. and. Well, we stopped because I don't, I don't lose very well and you kept beating me. <laughs> is and that just a man thing? I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm much better at it than I was, you know, when I was 7 through 25. We also discovered but. that we were playing by our seven-year-old's made-up rules. But it yeah. was fun. <laughs> it made it really hard, though, because we had to, it was, we had to do these complex complication, uh, uh, yeah, computations to figure out if we were, you know, which ones we were going to flip. K 
Okay, I need a... Will you please show me a like, perspective shot? I like Farkle. Farkle's the one, fun. The one, but Amy cheats too much. <laughs> okay, I think we're looking pretty good. What do you think? All right, so now I'm going to do a subtle background. Um, I'm not going to put all the different detail because I, I think it's just detracting from the flower a little bit, but I'm still going to put some of the muted to tones. i got to take this out of my water. When you buy, I think if you buy nice brushes, which these are kind of nice, um, it motivates them. you to like take care of them. Which is good for me. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my wash brush or my f filbert. It's kind of like a my flibber brush. What is a my filbert? This is a filbert. It's like the rounded. Now, if you're doing like watercolor, you would or different crafts, you'd call it a wash brush. And since we're kind of doing a wash, let's call it that. I'm gonna put a little thin layer of water, like super, super, super thin. Almost on traceable. I think like, ah! I thought that was dry already. Not. The cool thing about water is that you can kind of like erase it. Check that out. Boom! Okay. So ideally, I would wait to do this until I was sure all my paint was dry. But for time's sake, I'm just gonna do my best to go around the colors I've already laid down. So I'm just going around all of the branches and magnolias, the magnolia. So tell me again what you did for your final color for your branch. It's it's burnt umber with a little bit of red. Burnt umber. So burnt umber is the dark dark brown. This one. Okay. So get is this that one. This put one a little right? bit of red. Is that dark umber or was that a different? Yeah, brand? this is dark umber. So if you even just pull some of this okay. right on over. Okay. Oops. Did it again. Okay, so I'm going to choose this kind of lavender, very light lavender color. So I've got that initial um, really light color that I made for the, the magnolia blossom. And I'm just going to add a tiny, tiny dot of ultramarine blue because so it had red a little dot of red so if I'm adding a little bit of blue then it will give me this light lavender color ideally so, yeah it's pretty pretty good maybe even a teeny bit more blue I like this mixing colors business and just trying to come up with it's fun, huh? Okay, so now I'm just going to paint down with my filbert. This is a size 12 for those at home, but you can see it's this light, light lavender color. So I'm going to do my initial layer. Now, around all of the branches and flower, I'm going to try to leave a tiny 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 line of white. This will help with the illumination of the sun. And if you want to in the smaller parts just use your smaller brush. 
Maybe I'll use my tiny angled brush. So got some green on it. So I'm gonna grab that color with the tiny angled brush for my hard hard to reach spots. Make sure there's no water dripping on it. Did I just get okay and or if you want to just get super close and I mean you want this so thin So maybe I'll do the, with my smaller one, I'll line the, outline the flower, or all my edges first, and then bring the colors in with the filbert. Amy, do you like Star Wars? Um, I like to bond with my family over it. I don't think I would ever choose to go see it on my own volition. I like Star Wars. Was that your question to me and you're no, pretending it's someone else? <laughs> Chloe's wondering. She you... actually has Star Wars. A, her profile picture is a Star oh, Wars cool. thing. I like Star Wars. I wasn't really thrilled about the, the prequel series trilogy mm -hmm. and it was fun but I definitely feel like the more recent stuff is better and more true to the original uh, feeling and mm. everything. You talking about the latest one? Uh-huh. Yeah me too. I like that latest one because it was more felt more like the originals. We watched Enchanted last night. Oh yeah? That's one of my favorites. Angie W says, very nice Amy, I've never watched a live stream before. Love your work. Thank you. And I have no idea how to say this name, um, but <laughs> Vibhav Pulari. Is that? I don't know. It says he he says amazing work, and Barbie Mala says wow. Oh, these guys. Maybe I shouldn't try to say people's names <laughs> if I don't know how they're pronounced. I'll just destroy them. How do you spell it? V A I B H A V. V A I what? V A I B H A V. Okie dokie. I'm actually going to bring some of the peachy yellow from the beginning, just a little bit. Thin it down with my water, and I'm going to put some little patches. Just blend them into the background a little bit. That. Just a few splotches. It'll take you in some darker the red. These are background silhouettes of the flowers behind. Ooh, Termian says his name is Vaib Hav. I think that I, she gave me a little phonetic. 
Oh, cool. So I think I read that right this time. <laughs> I may be covering up the violet, the lavender a little too much the color. Just add some back in. That's all. Emmy says the flowers look amazing, by the way. Thanks. Okay. So now I'm going to do that. Sorry. Just add some different colors of the really light colors around. Oh, I've got some of that pinky color, which is pretty. Let's put some more lavender here. Looks like I need to mix some more up. Veli says you should use dark brown on the branches. What was that? Termia Veli thinks you should use dark brown on the branches. Me? Mm hmm. Right now? I. I that's just. <laughs> you mean like it's an additional layer? pretty dark in the picture. Yeah, I didn't... And she's thinking to, that you should free your work. She says it's quite constricted. I'm trying to understand what that means. Maybe because I'm referencing the photo. I'm, pretty, I'm making it pretty photo realistic at this point. So, if, if that's what she means, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Some more of that blue, a little bit. Stephanie Bergeron just commented. She says, I love that everyone has a different style. Yeah. I think that's great. You too. I love how naughty the branches are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're pretty. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put a little more blue into some of these, some of the background. I want a little more depth and some red got on my brush, but that's okay. I'll make it work. There's my glue. This makes me want to have a magnolia tree in there. Did I? Oh, I told you that <coughs> Nate got me one for yes. Mother's Day. Yeah, I we're gonna plant it today if we ever. Woohoo! What time is it? Can get out there. It's um, quarter to twelve. Okay, cool. That's Art good. fan says hello from down under. It's three a.m. here. Love your work, Amy. Oh, thanks. Hello. I've from always down wanted under. to go down under. Me too. Should we go? Yes. Let's. Can we stay at your place? Darker. Okay, now I'm going to grab my angled, small angled brush again. Where did it go? Go around again. Oops, that's really watered down. Too watered. <laughs> Emmy 
says she loves painting trees onto wood. She thinks it's ironic. I think so. <laughs> it makes sense. Oh, Akila Hassan says hello from South Africa. Hello. That's cool. What time is it in South Africa? Um, that's probably about seven hours from here, right? And ba Barvi Bala says, I'm from India. Oh. I have a bunch of friends from India that work with me. You do? <laughs> Art fan um, from Down Under says, would love to have you, but I have eight family members. <laughs> Sounds like there's not room. What? <laughs> there's only, we only have five kids. There should be room for that, right? And a mom and Nana and Baba. Yeah, but Akila says it, it's 744. He said 1944. We don't talk like that around here. <laughs> Can you hand me the ultramarine blue, please? Mother or husband? Thank you. You should pop your face in and say hi. Who votes yes? <laughs> I'm just busy trying to you know, shake the camera around a lot and <laughs> everything. Just getting some more darker. Ah, it got yellow in it. It's okay. I want to see what that looks like. It's kind of pretty, actually. Oh, yeah. Stephanie said we could just put a tent up. I think that sounds great. Okay. It's so beautiful outside right now here. But what about the dingoes? Perfect. This is important. This is good. You gotta consider these things. Uh -huh. Oh, I got too close. That's okay. Okay, so what did you water down? I thinned out very thinly. Just some some of my first hues. I put a little blue in it. Don't get like this. You make it whatever background color you want. Okay. I wanted some purples and pinks and peaches. Mm. peaches and then on. I'm leaving a very thin line around the flower and the branches to help um, emphasize the light of the sun. Angie's wondering if you put down a clear medium or was it an acrylic retarder in the background first before going in with the soft lavenders. I just put down a teeny glaze of water. Which, you know, might not be the best for everyone, but a glaze or medium would be good too. Yeah, the way you're leaving that little outline around it kind of feels like it's giving it that that backlit effect. Yeah. Good. It's hard for me to see that from right up close. working out nice, huh? Mm -hmm. Such a simple thing, too. A little time consuming, but I think worth it. I'd it's love okay, because we can just do the time lapse on this part in the edited version. Yeah, we'll do a quicker version for those with attention spans like mine for watching.
Dean Wright just checked back in. He says a lot of progress since I last checked. Looking great. Thanks. Dean? And this is where we need to have music going on in the background. Will you go get your violin? Seriously. No, but you're really just supposed to sing. This is, <laughs> you and your mom should come up with a just impromptu original work. Okay, you ready, mom? Sure. Okay, you start, I'll follow you. Does it have to be impromptu or can it be something we already no. know? Copyright? Well, there's all sorts of copyright rules. I don't think on this one. So. <laughs> my favorite go-to and well I stuck my <laughs> who wrote that song <laughs> we're gonna get sued and a little skunk like so and a little skunk said well bless my soul take, take it, it out take it out take it out take it out remove it did you see that don't leave everyone yeah, bye bye well, I <laughs> didn't take it out and the little skunk said take it out take it out or you wish you were dead take it out take it out take it out take it out remove it <laughs> that song was meant to be harmonized i'm sorry yes. but okay so i'm ready to do that watery stuff okay what do I do? So Carrie, you just uh, do Stephanie says Carrie's is looking great. I actually like the white canvas on hers as the background. It's pretty hot. Looks like it is later in the day. It is pretty. That looks really cool. So did you just do water and what did tell me? Yeah, I did a very, very, very thin wash of water over it. Just with that filbert. The one you have in your hand. I mean like so, so thin. You just that dip fairly, this water, like your yeah, rinse but, water? So dip it in there, wipe it on your paper towel so it's like mostly off. So? And then just, maybe just focus on a section at a time. And whatever section you're about to paint. And, and then you just... Brush colors over it. Whatever colors you want. Don't worry, Amy. Stephanie also loves yours. <laughs> the dumb background is awesome, she says. The other one we like to with the sing is You Are My Sunshine. Well, that one is copyrighted. For sure. So, <laughs> we're doing a cover. Yep. <laughs> All right. And then what are you using to? Then I've got my tiny angled brush to bring my colors up right to the flower. Mm -hmm. But like not quite touching it, but going around, you know? You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Vern? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Can I see a perspective shot, my dear?
done, I think. things with my round pointed brush. Just a little color up here. What was the song your family made up for? Yeah, let's sing that one. So, the kids... I'm going to try to erase this. Hang on. We made up a song that was like this. Like, so we've got five kids. We sit around and we sing. Like if it's our whole family. Five kids, a mom and a daddy. We're sitting in a room. They look right at each other and then sing, I love you, I love you, I, and we're pointing at each other, I love you, I love you, I love you, and you point at a different person every time, I love you, I love you, I love you, there you go, bing, <laughs> yeah. awesome, that's it. Right, so close, so close, I really want to follow the edges of my branch. There, my flower up here. You're getting some applause from the chat room for your singing, just so you know. Mm -hmm. It's 
Stephanie says she's inspired by these colors. I think my next doodle gem will have to be a rose quartz. Ooh. Have you seen her doodle gems? They're really cool. Yeah, they're beautiful. I like the way that they, at least on the videos, they end up looking really realistic and yeah. kind it's of really shiny cool. and beautiful. She knows colors really well, I think, how they work together. All right. Okay, so close to the finish line. Size these branches up here. Bring this one in a little bit. Fan is wondering if you would do a tutorial on painting a Boston Terrier. Hmm. That could be fun. Does she have a boss? He, who is it? <laughs> do you have a Boston Terrier? Termiavelli kind of agrees. It says possibly a dog in movement. Mm. Oh. Says I resent resentfully lost my beloved dog and would oh. like to try to paint him. Sorry. I want to make sure all of my... Now if you wanted, you could take a very light white color with the tiny, tiniest, with the tiniest bit of yellow, like the tiniest bit you could think of, and go around those white lines, but for the sake of time, oh, I do need to, yeah, for the sake of time, maybe not. <laughs> I'm gonna steal some of your light color, okay? Can I come in really fast? Thank you. They used to call him Snorty Morty. Snorty Morty? The yeah. dog. Oh, did he snort a lot? I guess that would make sense. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this really quickly. I almost forgot this part, but it's important to emphasize, I mean, to make it look like it's really light. We're going to 
go through some of the parts on the branches and the leaves to line them also with just this subtle light tone right here. So like, is that light enough? Okay. So like around here we had that light tone but then it kind of comes in and I need it, I need it just white white actually. Oh, that is yellow. Where's my white? Do you have my white? Will you hand it to me, please? Nope, that's black. That one. Thanks. Okay. So. Actually, where's my liner brush? Can you grab? Do I have it? I thought I had it. Is this it that I'm using? No, it's a pointy brush. Oh, here it is. I'll just steal yours and then you can steal mine later. Are you ready? Okay, so I've got my liner brush. I'm going to grab some white and get it on the tip of my brush and line these branches on the inside. Just, just some of them slightly. Tiny, tiny line white. And then that's already aligned, so maybe there's like little dots here. There's that light poking through. Let's see. Where else? There's some around here, like where these branches cross. Down here, it's brought in a little bit here. Maybe on around this one. See what a difference that made though? Like for real. And here. Is there some up there? Not really. What about over here? I think we're pretty good. Up here it's pretty dark. So let's just line a, a few of the petals. Just very slightly. So like the lip here is the tiniest bit of light. And then that's emphasized on the outside too, of the branch especially. So is this a lining? Yeah, that's a liner brush. And on this side where it comes over the branch. spot in there. All right. This kind of comes up here too a little bit. Where else on my flower? Um, tiny, 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 delicate thin line here. I'm like shaking. And up here. a little bit that goes up right there that should be added back in. Brighten that up. A little more white. This petal too here needs to be a little wider. So I'm going to add some of that into... <laughs> I'm talking louder because I realized I was talking so quiet. Okay. Then there's a line there that separates those petals a teeny bit. And there.
We add another layer in some of those areas where it's pretty dark underneath. Make that nice and bright right here. says you're right the small line of light really makes a difference and shows the light well pushes the depth it's pretty fascinating to me this one kind of comes down a little further just a little bit so does this one right here just a little I could keep going and I probably will later and finish just line some more emphasize some more lines with the white but I am going to sign off here and thank you everybody who participated with me today thank you mommy Thanks for inviting me. Happy Mother's Day, by the way. Thank you. This week. I had a wonderful Mother's Good. Day. Thank you. So, sign your name. Oops, got some red on there. Maybe I'll just cover that up. Anyway. All right. Where should I sign it? I'm going to sign it over here. A... Thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Don't forget to check out the downloadable lesson reference. It's seriously so helpful. Um, I think if you're anything like me, you might be surprised at what colors are in there that you thought weren't. Or what colors you thought were in there that aren't. And we'll see you next time. You can check out um, the the reference guide for next week too. It's we're gonna be painting some old rowboats, and that right. that, that reference is, is already up. What? That looks really cool. I'm excited. Yeah, cool. All right, everybody. One, one wave. Bye. Bye.